Hi, this is Scott Lancer, the Director of Associates for Biblical Research, and I'd like to welcome you today to, uh, to Digging for Truth. And uh, today I'm with my co-host, Henry Smith. And uh, in the last episode, Henry, we were talking about the genocide in Canaan, well, the accusation of genocide under Joshua, and the ultimate uh, uh, condemnation of God that is voiced by yes. some people that he caused the Israelites to go in and slaughter all these innocent people, or even if they weren't so innocent, it's just, it's just really, really awful that God did that. Yes. Not focusing on the, the lives of the, of the Canaanites, but focusing on God and making a judgment against him and using Christian morality in a, in a way to judge God yes. for what he did. Um, so we had that conversation uh, in the previous episode, and, and so today we, we really want to carry that forward. Um, maybe you could just give us a quick review of what we talked about and where we're going today. Yeah, you did a good job of really wrapping it up real quick. You know, we, we talked about in the previous episode, we encouraged people to go, go back and watch that. Yeah. Uh, first, first, to ascribe the term genocide to God, we explained that this is inappropriate. Uh, that the doctrine of God spelled out in the Bible uh, spells out who He is, mm -hmm. that He is holy and most just and most um, right in all His judgments. He has infinite knowledge. So when He executes judgment against uh, human beings, it's done in moral perfection. And the reason why He executes judgment is because we're all sinners and we deserve death. Mm -hmm. We talked about the Book of Romans in particular how that spells that out, God's indictment against the human race. Mm -hmm. We didn't emphasize as, as much, and we will in this episode, the solution to that indictment, and that right. is his son comes into the world. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that in our, mainly in our third segment today, uh, that the objector doesn't have a moral foundation to argue mm -hmm. uh, against the God of the Bible. Um, if the world just created itself and we're nothing but a rearrangement of atoms, where does moral obligation come from to begin with? Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the skeptic is stealing from the Christian worldview to um, sort of slap God in the face. Yes. This is very serious. Uh, the church ought not ascribe the term genocide to God. And uh, I made the argument that it's almost blasphemous to do so, and I think the church should avoid doing that. Uh, we're talking about the holiness of the righteous, infinite, absolute God of creation. So that's sort of... yes. The foundation we laid. We also talked about how the primary texts in total mm -hmm. show that the land was <coughs> dispossessed, that God's intention was not to just annihilate everyone, but to break up the national structure, political and religious structure of Canaan because it was so corrupt yeah, we, and, and we wicked. Real, that's right. We need to understand that God had limitations upon himself in how he was carrying out that judgment. Yes. Yeah, he, God, God restrains. As, as long as we yeah. live, God restrains. Uh, he, he gave um, uh, opportunities for repentance. We see that with Rahab. We see mm -hmm. dispossession where people can still live. They've migrated to Phoenicia, uh, mm -hmm. different commands. We also see you know, that this warfare, this harem warfare, is not a, is not a permanent form of Israelite warfare. We mm -hmm. don't see that as normative. It's, it has a, it's exceptional. Uh, we do see it in, 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 in the time of David and Saul against the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. It's a very particular type of thing, but it's not normative when they go into battle against their enemies. Uh, they're commanded not to attack the Moabites, not to attack the descendants of Esau. In fact, Deuteronomy 20 talks about uh, sending peace offerings to a city mm -hmm. to, in an attempt to try to make peace without having to wage war against them. Right. So there's all these restrictions that are sort of there. Mm -hmm. So we gave the, the most difficult passages from Deuteronomy, but they're mitigated by the broader picture of what God lays out in his command to Joshua and the people of Israel. Yes, yes, very, very important. Um, you know, I, I, I think about, uh, we, we, we mentioned in the last episode about Nineveh uh, and, and how God in that case, he completely relented. Yes. Of his judgment, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did. And uh, I would add just one more, one more thought that we didn't bring up. 
in specifically in Genesis 15, when God promises Abraham that he's going to give his descendants the mm -hmm. land, he says that the sin of the Amorites has not reached its full measure. Yeah. Okay, so he gives them centuries to turn away from what they were already doing, sacrificing their own children to the gods, murdering their own children, uh, all kinds of perverse behavior, idolatry, all kinds of stuff like that. So I just want to add that to the mix here that he yeah. relents for centuries. Right. Secondly, back to the now turning around to the Nineveh discussion, this is exactly why Jonah turns and runs in the opposite direction, because Jonah knew how wicked the Assyrians were, mm -hmm. and they were wicked, and yet God sends this messenger of mercy. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he pulls him out of the sea and sends him all the way to Nineveh. So it's not only that he wants to send Jonah to Nineveh, he hunts Jonah down to teach him something about mercy, sends him to Nineveh, mm -hmm. and they repent. Yeah. The city of wickedness. So this shows you the, the really pic the picture of God's grace in the Old Testament, not just the New. Yeah, I think it's interesting in Scripture that God rebukes people who want to call down fire and judgment upon other people. You know, it, it's, uh, I think of, was it James and John, the, the sons of thunder, and they wanted to call down judgment. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I also think how, um, in Jonah's case, he was disappointed that God didn't judge them. He, he, he just wanted them obliterated. And it just shows you, even in acts of judgment and attitudes of judgment, we're sinful in them. We would call down judgment quickly. God, the God of the Bible is patient. He is long suffering yes. and gracious. These are all qualities we want. Like if we get called out, we want someone to be merciful to us, to be gracious to us. I just find it fascinating that we get it wrong on both sides of the discussion. Yeah, that, they, you know, that's really good, Scott. I, I, it, it is, and that's why you know, God says vengeance is his and not ours, because we are just utterly mm -hmm. incapable of understanding what true justice is. Yeah. Now, we have limited senses of justice. We have a justice system. We try to have laws in our, in our, those things are given by God as civil authorities and all that. It's very imperfect. We're striving to try to do it right, but we're so messed up because of our corrupt nature yeah. That it's a very imperfect kind of thing, and that's why God does that. You know, it's interesting too. Uh, Jonah goes to Nineveh, and and they repent, but it's only for a, a season, and then he sends the prophet Nahum there, and it's irrevocable. The judgment is that's so. There right. are limits on God's patience. What they are, we don't always know, but mm -hmm. we should encourage the audience to say we don't want to test the limits of those patience, of that patience, because. That's right. It's uh, very unwise to do so. Amen. Very good, Henry. Okay, well, we're glad you've joined us today, and we'll be right back to continue our conversation together. In a culture of intense Bible-denying skepticism, Associates for Biblical Research exists to strengthen followers of Jesus by affirming the authority of the Bible. Our archaeological fieldwork and original research form a strong foundation in upholding the reliability of the scriptures. For students or anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible, please visit our website and partner with us by joining our prayer team or financially supporting this ministry. And thank you for standing with us. Welcome back to Digging for Truth. I'm here today with my co-host, Henry Smith, and we're talking about a, a, a complex issue, and that is the, the whole, uh, the, the judgments, I'll put it that way, Henry, the judgments that are brought against God for how he acted in judgment in the past. And we've been having a most important conversation about that. Um, one of the points I think that, that uh, the detractors uh, bring yeah. against God is they approach this by saying, well, you know, it's, it's wrong for God to use uh, human instruments in acting out his judgment. 
you know, I, I don't know what they think would be an improvement over that judgment. <laughs> yes, yes, but, yes. But they're against God using Israel or some other human instruments to carry that out. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I think I think that is part of the of the of the reaction that people have that mm -hmm. they struggle with these passages because because as you said, the Israelites are God's instrument of judgment, right? Yeah. So there's a couple things we have in the in the Bible various ways that God brings judgment, what we maybe call we what we call wrath, the wrath of God. There's different forms of it. In Romans 1, a lot of it is giving over, so it's a sort of a passive kind of judgment in terms of he withdraws his kindness from people who continue to sin and then they fall into their depravity further and further. Mm -hmm. There's different ways that it manifests itself. Uh, in nature, we see the ultimate expression of this in the flood. Mm -hmm. I mean, here we have uh, the instance of the wickedness of the world had grown so great that God brought judgment upon the whole world, save eight people in the ark. Mm -hmm. That's extremely sobering. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, we have the plagues of Egypt, right? The Pharaoh refuses to let the people of Israel go. Moses is the prophet who warns him over and over and over and over again. Right. And God brings judgment through the, tent, through the signs. Uh, but these plagues that, that come upon Egypt is using nature mm -hmm. as an instrument of judgment. Now, to, to, to think about this too, Scott, is, is to think about the people of Israel. God is no hypocrite in all this. Right? He brings judgment upon the Canaanites, but the Israelites end up doing the same stuff that the Canaanites do. What does God do? God brings judgment upon his own people through the Assyrian Empire and the Babylonian Empire. Yes. It's very sobering. Yeah. Uh, God uses them as an instrument. And, and uh, the, the book of Habakkuk, in fact, the prophet Habakkuk, is all about Habakkuk objecting to all this. Yes. You know, that, God, how can you use these wicked people to bring judgment against our own people? Mm -hmm. uh, but God is wise and infinite in all of this, and he knows. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's pretty sobering, but we, that's what we have to grapple with when we're looking at, at, the, at the text of Scripture as it relates to human instruments. That God uses pots of clay, if you want to say, yes, you know, for His purpose, and um, it's very sobering. It is. It's a. <clears throat> it's an extraordinary dynamic that God doesn't just uh, act in a kind of deistic way, where He's standing off, totally transcendent. Yeah. He enters yeah. into human affairs uh, directly. Uh, we're going to talk about you know government and his his work through government, in, in, in establishing justice and order. Um, all of these things show us that God He loves us, He loves His creation, He loves the world, but He is not going to allow us to go off and do whatever we want. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that He restrains the human race from 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 committing acts of evil to the degree that we're actually capable of. He uses human mm -hmm. government. He uses restraint within the person's spirit. He mm -hmm. does all kinds of things. Uh, and as I mentioned, Romans 1 is a discussion about his withdrawal from people, mm -hmm. uh, giving them over to their own nature. Uh, it's really a sobering kind of judgment. It's different. It's not an active one in the sense of he's doing X, Y, or Z, but they're just being given over to a depraved mind. It's very, it's very serious. Now Christ comes, and we're, we just want to mention real quick. Uh, we yeah. want to give the positive, uh, the 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 good news about all this That's judgment, right. and we're going to talk about that in our last segment. We're going to talk about Jesus. Uh, the the thing we would say too is that God gives human government in Romans thirteen. Uh, as a way to uh, keep order in societies, mm -hmm. uh, right? It's for our benefit. It's what we call common grace, right? Mm -hmm. It's not saving grace, but it's common grace. It's an instrument that God uses to be kind to people, that we have police forces that keep criminals from running wild and, and so mm -hmm. on. Um, what's interesting is in Romans 13, he says that the, the person who works for the government, the police officer, the military person, and so on, they have authority. He's God's servant for your good, meaning you and I and all people. Mm -hmm. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. Okay? He is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. So it's interesting. So here we have in the New Testament, for the person watching who's in the church, who says, I, I, I'm going to separate the New Testament God from the Old. Here we say, God is saying through Paul, 
No. I'm using human instruments as an instrument of wrath mm -hmm. in the New Testament. So there's no divorcing this idea that God doesn't use human instrumentality to bring about his purposes, That's human right. government being one of them. That's right. A absolutely correct. Uh, and, and again, it, what's important for us as Christians is to view God correctly assess his character correctly going back to our very first you know conversations on this we we need to get back to understanding who our god is yes um every single soul will be brought forth one day to stand before god one of the most uh, delusional things that people can have swimming around in their brains is that there will be no judgment. If there's one thing we understand is that God judges, but as we're going to find out in this third uh, segment, that even when God's own son is judged, he was judged on our behalf. He took upon himself our yes. penalty. And we're gonna talk all about that. But God is a God of grace and goodness. Judgment is part of his justice. Yes, it is. You know, it, it's interesting. You know, people scream and holler about no justice in the world. Yeah. There's no justice in the world. There's no justice in the world. And then when we read in the scriptures that God brings justice in the world, they complain about God's justice. So which way is it? Now, as you said, um, we want to bring the good news in the next segment because we've been talking about difficult mm -hmm. subject Canaanites and all this other kind of thing. Now we're going to talk about what Jesus has done to come in the world. What does Jesus say about these kind of things? That's right. A directly in his earthly ministry and B what does God accomplish through Christ mm -hmm. in bringing judgment upon his own son? That's right. And we will be right back to continue that conversation in just a moment. Bible in Spade is a non-technical quarterly publication published by the Associates for Biblical Research, written from a scholarly and conservative viewpoint. Bible in Spade supports the inerrancy of the biblical record and is a must read for both the serious Bible student and anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible. Archaeological evidence, properly interpreted, upholding the history of the Bible. Subscribe today at BibleArchaeology.org. Welcome back to Digging for Truth. Henry Smith and I have been discussing a, a most important and controversial subject. Now, for me, Henry, this is not really controversial. <laughs> this is just as plain as it can possibly be. Yeah. But you know, we're, 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 we're having this discussion on today's show. Uh, it's something that's discussed in the world. The, it seems like a, 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 in our culture, there is the, a, 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 a tremendous amount of conflict between the idea of just justice and acting justly and and the church is, gets confused on this because we don't stay thoroughly biblical on it well i think it's appropriate for us now to again to to uh, make sure everyone understands that the, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. That's exactly right. And that Jesus coming into the world, uh, he came uh, to not just show us a moral life, which he does perfectly, but he came to, to, to die for us. And he rose from the dead to give us life. Um, let's talk about Jesus. Let's yes. talk about what Luke chapter 13 talks about. Yeah, you know, this attempt to sort of separate the old from the new, um, uh, you know, God, the old, this thing that the Old Testament, God's a God of judgment and the new is he's God of grace. No, he's a God of grace, mm -hmm. who's also a God of judgment. Yeah. And Jesus talks about this in Luke 13. So there's two <laughs> incidents that occur. This is, this is a very, this is one of the harder teachings of Jesus. This is, this is the thing, you know, this is, this is the kind of teaching that made people kind of fade away in his mm -hmm. earthly ministry. So there are these Galileans, Luke chapter 13, uh, blood, uh, that apparently they'd been murdered. Pilate mingled their blood with the sacrifices. And so he was asked about this. And Jesus says, do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than the others? Because they suffered in this way. No, I tell you, 
unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Whoa. Exactly. D and now double well. Or the 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell. So apparently this building fell over and killed 18 people. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? In other words, you want to draw comparisons. You want to say these, these sinners are worse than the ones that are still alive. Mm -hmm. It's essentially the human judgment that, that people make when yeah. these kind of things happen. He's reading their minds because he knows this, was, this is what we do. Yep. Yep. Right? No, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So you'll notice a couple things. One is the perish thing is, is not, well, the likewise is not referring to the particular way that they died. Because obviously, no one else is going to die in those particular manners. It looks like it's referring to spiritual death. It's not mm -hmm. just physical death. The parish of, seems to be pointing to a greater death. Mm -hmm. So repent. Repent uh, now. Because that could happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, in the judgment of God, you don't know when that's going to come. And he doesn't answer the question as to why. He doesn't yes. sit there and go, well, you know that guy over here, John, from this family over here, you know what he did? Blah, 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 blah. No, Jesus doesn't get into any of that. It's kind of like Job, mm -hmm. you know, stand up and I will speak to you, right? And God tells him, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? It's a, it's a little bit of the same kind of thing here. Jesus is getting to the point. You don't, it's not your business to know the particular sins of those people, it's your business to be right with God. That's, right. That's the point. And yeah. so Jesus gets that. It sounds cold, but it's not cold. It's actually merciful because Jesus is telling them, repent yeah. uh, because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. We see that in the book of James. Yeah. You know, don't plan for doing this or that next year. Yeah. Say, if the Lord wills, if we live, we will do this and that. That's right. If we live, the text says. So that means... Well, if, if, we're, if we're blessed enough to even be alive, yeah. we'll make those plans. Yeah. How about I, that? I, that's right. That's right. You know, I find it fascinating that people, uh, they lose track of this very simple reality. You know, they, they come to the Bible and they say, well, the Bible talks a lot about dying and death and judgment. And it's like, try living life without God and then finding about judgment and death. Yeah. Human yeah. beings are the worst judges and the most merciless judges. And and, and we I see that in social media all the time, don't we? That's right. That's right. Um, I, I just think, again, we're just being driven back to understand God correctly and looking at Jesus, his son, and how we handle this, this passage in Luke 13 is so very important. It is, it is. So Scott, let's, let's focus on now, let's focus on a couple of big picture things. One is, yeah. we have the land of Canaan. God is making it a holy realm. Yeah. Okay, or that's the goal. The Israelites mess it up. They get corrupted anyway. The judges period is all about that. Yeah. This is a picture of what God is going to do at the end of the age. It's a type. It's a shadow yes. of the new heavens and new earth mm -hmm. where God is going to return in Christ to make a holy realm mm -hmm. that will be completely purged of any wickedness or evil. It will be perfect. The creation and those who dwell in it. Now, yes. in order for one to dwell in it, they have to receive their forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. The only way to do that is to believe that Jesus died for them and was raised from the dead. So God takes this warfare concept, harem, judgment, mm -hmm. complete cursing, and puts it upon his own son. So he puts his money where his mouth is, mm -hmm. in a sense. He brings <laughs> the judgment and wrath of God eschatological eternal wrath upon his own son mm -hmm. so that we can live in that new holy realm in the new heavens and new earth. That's right. So God puts his money where his mouth is. Mm -hmm. His son suffers far greater than the Canaanites or the Egyptians or the Assyrians or the Babylonians for us. And that's how you enter into the holy realm yes. of the new world to come. Yes. So Jesus was under the ban. Jesus was under the ban. Yeah. For us, far worse than what the Canaanites dealt with. Yeah. So God put his money where his mouth is. I said it three times now. Holy, holy, holy is God, right? Yes. Three times he, he does it for us to give us eternal life. Amen. And that is the message that we ought to be hearing through all of this judgment. 
that God has judged the Son for us and we can be free from his judgment Amen. in the world. So the good news is for all of us today is that Jesus died on the cross for us to pay the price for our sins and he offers each one of us eternal life. Um, I'm so thankful that I've had this opportunity today to talk with you, Henry, Thank about you. this really important subject. We pray God blessings on all of you who are watching today and may the Lord lead us all into his truth in these things. Thanks again for watching.